Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. We are considering the message cleansing of the tongue and sorry, cleansing of the heart and tongue through sanctification and holiness. Cleansing of the heart and tongue through sanctification and holiness. I want to tell you some of the benefits of being in this conference. Maybe stressing one. You can see the hazard God has put you into for the purpose of getting you purified, fit for heaven. In your house, you might not have gotten opportunity to be committed, consecrated, submissive as it is in this conference. See how you are blowing on yourself, fanning yourself because of heat. In your house, you will be lying down. You will be sleeping under AC, getting ready for hell because you'll be too casual for sin to be removed from your life. Here, you're not doing your will. God has to take away your will to cause you to follow his will. Otherwise, you will not be seated here. The sleep is not sufficient for you. Some of you normally wake up 10 o'clock in the morning. How will you now be waking up 5, 6? No. God has to take away your will. And to put his will before you. In order to deliver you from Satan. And break the forces of darkness in your life. In your house, you would have not been able. Now, you would have eaten. You are not eating. All because you are doing a spiritual exercise to make God do something special in your life. What will I say again? I am saying, come to conference. Don't mind how much you spend. The blessing is higher. No, I can sit at home and get the same message, not the same discipline. You will not arrive at the full submission of God's will. Those at home choose when to be there. If they're sleeping, nobody wakes them up. They sleep to their convenience. Nobody wakes them up. But here, you have ushers to wake you up. Don't sleep. Sometimes you're even angry with them. But they say, don't sleep, listen to the word. So what I am saying is, come to conference. If you develop laziness in coming to conference, you will hurt yourself. For you over there, when there's no opportunity, God understands. There's no opportunity. And you have struggled all with no opportunity. But let it not be because of your laziness. You're wasting your time. I give every man according as his ways. Ah. That's God. He cannot reward a laboring Christian in the same way he, the crumbs fall for the lazy ones. No. Always try to be there. Always strive to be here. You will see grace will work on you. If it does not work in this conference, it may work in the other conference. Keep on following. Keep on following. The Lord shall turn to face you one day, one time, 
and bless you. Amen. 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 One glorious morning, I shall see my Savior. One glorious morning, by and by, by and by. Again, I was pitying you. Because of the heat of the sun. I was pitying you because of lack of water. That you don't have enough water to take bath, to do this. I expect that that noise going on should have been controlled by people around that place. I pity you. Are you sleeping well? See, they take away light and see the heat you feel in your rooms. God tried to show me human beings suffer than this. This thing you think is suffering. It is my will to allow human beings suffer. These people are suffering to receive blessings. Some suffered and died. And are even in hell. So, suffer according to my will. God allows this suffering. Don't complain. Suppose you were in hell. Will you be complaining? Who will even hear your complaint? But this is your partaking in the suffering of Christ. Your partake, so that you will partake in the glory of Christ. Therefore, suffer happily. Suffer the heat happily. God is redeeming you from hell. Good is following you. Honey is manufactured during heat. As, I mean, in hot season, the bees produce honey. So God allows it so. There are many assemblies that are air-conditioned. But no single person is, is in Christ there. No one. So, take it as it comes. Receive it with joy. Is that comparable to the cross of Christ? It's a little thing. When you suffer in the will of God, because you came to honor him, because you came to worship him. Because you came to show him forth. The Lord will bless you. So, take your suffering. Food is not enough. Take it so. You didn't even get the food. You will not die. The people that were with Jesus. In the mountain. They, they didn't eat. For how many days? Three days. Until Jesus himself knew that although I'm sending them away now, let them eat to go. Why, they, why not think it? Let them eat to stay. That condition blessed the world. That condition of not eating, suffering, is a cry to the Father of, for your sins. To tell him, Lord, I can bear every condition for you to forgive me. I can bear every condition for you to save my life. I can bear every condition for you to preserve my life. And the Lord was there with them. He was there and he knew they were angry. But their mind was not on their food. Their mind was on God. May God put your mind on himself. All your thoughts should be on God. In Jesus' name. All about you should be God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
All food will follow after. Good sleep will follow after. Air condition will follow after. But for now, endure all condition to serve the Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Cleansing of the heart and tongue through sanctification and holiness. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. God wants you to be perfect. The notion of many in the world is nobody can be perfect. But what is this scripture saying? That is not true. People can be perfect, including you. And this is what God wants, be perfect. Don't have sin in your life. Don't have sin in your life. Be ye therefore perfect. Don't listen to these preachers who, who, are, who themselves are not perfect and cannot make anyone perfect. They cannot make anyone perfect. But listen to the Bible that says be perfect. Perfect means don't have sin in your life, in your heart, in your mouth, in your actions. Don't go to places of sin. Don't speak words of sin. Don't associate with sin. Be perfect even as your father which is in heaven. If your husband is not, go beyond him to be perfect. If your pastor is not, go beyond him to be perfect. Aim at the perfection of God. As God is perfect. Yes. God desires that his children be perfect. Be holy. How much more of those among them that he has chosen to become ministers of the gospel. God wants you to be perfect. No error in your life. Yeah. Not only God, true ministers of the gospel, who knew God, like myself, want you to be perfect. I'm waiting patiently for you to be perfect. I want you to submit yourself to God to be perfect. I do all things that will make you perfect. Colossians chapter 1. I read verse 28 and 29. Colossians chapter 1. Whom we preach warning every man in all, I mean, when we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. My desire for this perfection is on leaders, the pastors, the overseers. They are the one Jesus broke the bread and gave them to give to people. If they are not clean, if they are not clean, if they are not clean, they, some people will not receive bread from their hands. They will not represent Jesus well. I desire them to be perfect. I desire them. Women leaders, 
I desire you to be holy. Righteous, perfect, even as God desires. If you are not, you will want to influence your husband. Eve influenced Adam, even without sin in her life. Sin had not yet come in. Just by the, the, the wisdom of Satan. How much more you, if you have sin, the thing will be easier for Satan. You will influence your husband against righteousness. You will turn the heart of your husband against so many women in the congregation. You will hijack the walk from your husband. You yourself will tell your husband to submit under you. You will pick up the walk. You will pick up the walk. That's why I am desiring you to be perfect. You will offend so many women that the church will be turned to a murmuring place because of pastor's wife. You will want to show yourself, show your glory, show your clothing. You will want to show your intelligence, show your power. And the whole place will be corrupt. And the will of God will no more be done. Because the women or the woman in charge is not perfect. You'll be looking for your own. Your mind will be on money. It is the woman that gives you money that will earn your, your pleasure. That will receive your recognition. Because you will, you will love money. You're not perfect. Your mind is on money. It is the person who gives you. You'll be making rules that will bring more money. And you will never be subject to the rule of the church. No, you will not be subject to the rule of the church. If you happen to be in the kitchen, you will eat and eat like, uh, what do we call them? This uh, insect that lives, lives inside flower. He eats and eats and is lying down there. You will eat. Church money will be your pleasure. Whatever remains is your own. It's because you don't know him. Your heart is not on God, but on money. That is the problem. You will make rules to favor yourself. If you're not perfect, if you're not holy, you will select people that will justify you, that will praise you, not people gifted by God, not the ones that God is looking for. No. The one that will back you up. You will hate people who are advising your contrary. Eha, is there no other person that we can inquire of? Mm, there is a man. His name is Micaiah, but I hate him. He doesn't speak good of me. You will want to remove such from your cabinet. Not the mind of God. You will not even listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit then the church is dead in your hand. The church will die. That's why we're laboring on perfection. Heart and tongue, tongue and heart, heart and tongue, tongue and heart. I'm bringing you to sanctification. It's not only for women. All these ones walking here, men, women, if they're not perfect, they'll be walking with envy. Anybody can bribe these media people. Be showing me. I will send you money. They will be showing her in picture. Just for the flesh. Because of imperfection. God will not be there. God will be grieved. Because it's money now that will be walking in the church. Not the Holy Spirit. Be ye perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. This I do that I might present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's why we're focusing on this. Perfect. That you don't hate yourselves. Perfect. That you hate sin. 
you are afraid of any, neg- any negative thought that comes in- into your heart against your sister. Say, no! No! I cannot accept that. That's where we want to take you to. May the Lord make you to reach that destination in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Many believers in Christ today engage their tongues in lies and corrupt speech. Some of these are ministers of the gospel who have reputation among others. Just imagine, see these people sitting down there with green and yellow stripes. They are the women leaders. How you honor them, how you wish to be among them. If you come and see some imperfection, lies, anger among them, hey, their glory is destroyed. Their, gl- their glory is destroyed. That is why we want to do everything to make them perfect. We can engage in discipline, we can engage in rebuke. We can engage in correction. We are teaching. We are preaching. We are praying. Be perfect. Because you are the eye of people. Yes. Isaiah showed you his his own case. That a minister, a prophet, but he had lying leaves. He had unclean leaves. He was defiled because he was among a people of unclean leaves. But the Lord did what will happen today. The Lord sanctified him. So, you too, the Lord will sanctify you. Again, we heard about Abraham as we understood his case. God chose you and made great promises to you. And firmly told you, Sarah, your wife, will bring forth a child between yourselves. And that child, I will multiply him. But why did you become afraid to the point of thinking that your wife will die? So that's what we're saying. Workers, ministers of the gospel, speaking lies. Oh, Jesus. Destroy it in their lives. Let the blood of Jesus touch it out of their lives. To come and find this one, Sarah, that was lying between her and God. He said, God was not telling the truth. Sarah, you defend yourself. This yourself defense is terrible. To the point that the revelations of God on you the voice of God on you, you deny it. No, I didn't lie. No, I lie No, I didn't say like that. God said, ah, <laughs> you said like that. I said, by this time next year, Sarah, your wife, shall embrace a son. Why is Sarah laughing where she is, saying, an old woman like me, can I give birth to a child? An old man like Abraham, can a wife of such an old man give birth to a child? Why is Sarah saying so? I am God. Is there anything too difficult for me? Instead of Sarah to keep quiet, that thing that moves people to tell like moved her. Come, Sarah, why didn't you keep quiet? Everybody asks her, why didn't she keep quiet? The power of lie. Inbred sin. Adamic nature. Even when you have come to God. Even when you have been given a prominent place. It's still making you to tell lies. No, I didn't say so. Who told you that you should speak? Self-justification. The Lord said, no, you said so. 
No, you said so. Sarah was convicted. Without conviction, how will your sin be forgiven? This thing that you're always denying, denying, how will your sins be forgiven? How can you then be cleansed? How? That you're always denying. That's the question. Coordinators, stand up from there and begin to move around to see that everybody is hearing this word. God help you. That's what we're saying. Yes. People telling lies. Serving God with defiled tongue. Serving God with defiled heart. James chapter 3, verse 6. James chapter 3. Verse 6. James chapter 3. Verse 6. The Bible says. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among members. That it defileth the whole body. And set it on fire. The course of nature. And it is set on the fire of hell. Verse 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed. And has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God. Even the Father. And therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be, that a fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitters. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain but yield salt water and fresh water. Is talking to these who's, who are the supposed ministers of God. What happens to you that this same mouth, the Lord is saying, go and change people for me. It's still proving that you are not changed yourself. Our sister here came to give, te give testimony. She was on trousers. I went, went to preach. Repent of your sins. They said, go and repent of your own first. Why should it be so that the people who are working close to you as a woman leader are finding fault with you? They're speaking in their hearts. She's not born again. They're speaking like that because of corruption. The breath that comes out of your nostrils are unclean. Why should it be so? Should this mouth you used to bless God be used to curse human beings? Should use this tongue you used to sing to the worship of God be the tongue you used to abuse mankind? Backbite, degrade, downgrade mankind? This thing all not so to be. This thing ought not so to be. Defilement of the tongue can come from multitude of ways. Speaking and speaking and speaking. You want to jest, you want to jog, you want to say this, you want to say that. Dominating, dominating the conversation. The Bible says the required spirit of a woman is that of a meek and quiet spirit. Even a fool, if he holdeth his tongue, shall be esteemed a man of wisdom. In a multitude of words, there lacketh no sin. If any man says he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceiveth himself, 
This man's religion is vain. So that is the whole thing. Hold yourself. Hold yourself. Don't be forward in speaking. Don't speak over much. If you find an environment, even answering questions in the church, nobody is talking. You talk one, nobody is talking. You talk to, ah, no, you control yourself. Else, people turn to you for over much speaking. That is a sensible person. Learn to speak few words. Speak few words. It gives dignity to your personality. Yes. Don't say all you have. Control your mouth. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. With all the healing Jesus did, there was still a man in the beautiful gate that was crippled. That one will be for some time. So, learn to control your tongue. Learn to control your life. That is what we are saying. Yes. Serving God with defiled tongue. You have told you that Isaac lied. It's not my wife. It's my sister. Until she, he was discovered. What about Miriam and Aaron? is still the sin of the tongue on Moses. They must have something to say about the marriage of Moses. What's your problem? You're not afraid? God says, why were you not afraid to venture into that area to be speaking about my servant Moses, even his house, his marriage, his wife, what took you there? Your tongue cannot keep quiet. Like Sarah. I said, why didn't you keep quiet, Sarah? Miriam, what's your problem? Didn't God know Moses when he appointed him? Didn't God know that he was married to a, a, a Midianitish woman? Didn't God know about the nature of his family? But he picked, he picked him. Then why are you talking? To end yourself judgment. Why are you talking? Why are you comparing Moses to yourself? Are you on the same level? The tongue. Miriam became leprous because of the tongue. You see? Of course, we heard also of Ananias and Sapphira who lie about what they brought to the Lord. Why are you lying? Did God tell you to bring everything? Why did you promise that you must bring everything? Why did you promise? And now, by your mouth, you are condemned. So, with all this, we see infirmity and the, it's walking in your life, holy woman. This is disclaiming your profession. The use of your tongue that reveals your, the nature of your heart disclaims your profession of holiness. That's, that's why we want God to do this second thing for us. This talks about those who are born again already. Those who are ministers of the gospel. Those who are servants of Christ, they have acknowledged Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. They are already in the mission field. They are leaders over churches. They are leaders over group of 10, of 50, of 100, of 1,000, and so on. They are already people that are Zealous for Jesus. Members of the church. But zealous. They profess Jesus. I'm talking about wives that are born again. That are telling their husbands, I am in Christ. I want you to defend that statement. The Lord will do another thing in your life. So that you will defend the profession of Christianity. That you are bearing. Before men. You will adorn the gospel of Jesus. 
before the world. And this is by an experience called sanctification. Everybody say it. Again. Again. Sanctification. What is sanctification? Simply illustrated. You wash a dirty cloth in a detergent with water. You wash it, came out of that cloth. It's, and the dirt removed into the water. And both the cloth and the dirty water are together. If you bring out the cloth, yes. It, the dead in its body has been loosened to the water. But while it was water, it, the water was dirty. The dirty water is also still in the body of that cloud. You need to do a second thing. What is the second thing? What is the second thing? Rinsing. Everybody say rinsing. Because the dirty water is still there. Although the cloth looks clean now, but dirt are still in the line. You take that cloth to a clean water and squeeze it there to squeeze, to make clean water enter into the holes of the cloth and dilute the dirt, extract the dirt, and remove the dead. Can that cloth be compared to when it was still not rinsed? It, is, it cannot be compared. Yeah. Dead inside has now been rinsed out. The cloth is cleaner. The cloth is brighter. Yes. The cloth is ready for iron. Ironing is baptism in the Holy Ghost. There, the cloth is ready for beautiful use. Fine. But even without the baptism in the Holy Ghost, if just with the rinsing, it's clean. You can put on some cloth like that. So some people are not baptized with the Holy Ghost. And yet, they will go to heaven. They will do the service of God. But for service, baptism in the Holy Ghost is required. Look for it for better service, for higher service. But many clothes are used without ironing. Yet, iron your cloth. It looks smarter, brighter, attractive. That is sanctification experience. So, you who have been born again already, because of the death that are still in the holes of your heart, the water of sanctification will come to you. Amen? In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. I read verse 25 to 27 of Ephesians, chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Standing here, it is the first washing that has taken place. Christ loved the church. Christ gave himself to the church. The first washing, because he called it church, meaning the first experience of salvation has taken place. That's why he called it church. The world is not church. It is when Christ is in you that you, are a, a, you, you form a church. You are a member of the church. You are part of the body of Christ. Then you are in the church. So they have become a church already, meaning Christ has died for them. They have been washed from the sins of their lives. But something again has to happen. I said in verse 
26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the world. Can you not see? A rinsing water has to be done, has come to come again to do the sanctification work. A rinsing water has to walk. And the word of God is called water. A rinsing water of the world has to walk again in your life to sanctify you. The Holy Ghost sanctifies. The blood of Jesus sanctifies. The word of God sanctifies. It's a second touch, second touch, second touch to make you thoroughly clean. To make you thoroughly clean. When you pluck a fruit, you need to wash it from the dust or from some other things in it before you eat. It is a fruit already in your hand. But wash it first. Some deaths are there. Wash it first to, me, to be clean of those dust and some small insects. Then you eat. You have been saved, but some remains of sins are in you. That the reason why this lie, not, although not as much as the sinners who are lying, but your own come bam, one is why he said, Kai, you find yourself under pressure. See how Abraham was cornered. Bam, he has, Ay. God wants to remove that by the experience of sanctification. Sanctification is also meaning, mean, it also means second cleansing. The first cleansing was done in salvation. Sanctification is second cleansing in the water. Again, it is second purifying. The first purifying was done when you wash that cloth in detergent. You remove the cloth, dead from the cloth, you purify. But second purification comes when you take the cloth for rinsing. That one is called sanctification. That the Adamic nature... Adamic nature. Adamic nature. How do I explain it for you? How do I make you understand this issue of Adamic nature? Okay. There is a resemblance. Let me take from those people who resemble their mother or resemble their father. That resemblance is in every man born into the world. He, he resembles Adam by nature. He takes the form, the nature of Adam. The blood that flowed from beginning to now is the blood of Adam. And that blood is contaminated with the sin Adam did in the Garden of Eden. The blood got contaminated so that everybody born by Adam has that contamination by the blood of Adam. It is a sinful blood. A sinful blood. Blood of Adam. And that is why Cain rose up immediately to kill Abel. But Abel became freed from his sin. Why? It is it by the sacrifice of the blood? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The blood of animal that represented Jesus, that God slew in the garden and used the skin to cover Adam and Eve was what cleansed their sin from, from them. But the original passes to children. Every person will need to come to God naturally for this cleansing one by one. But apart from that, this blood is contaminated because of Adam. 
people commit their own sin. People choose their own sin. It is their own sin that God saved them from to make them born again. You are a drunkard. You are a thief. You are a liar. You are a satanist. You are what? This is the sin you are doing. Others are not doing it, but that's your own. Everybody has his own sin. It is this sin Jesus saves you from and makes you free from sin. You can't go and commit them again publicly. But because of this blood of Adam that passes in to you, it makes, it manufactures some kind of, once in a while, it provokes him. It provokes him. That's why a rinsing, the second rinsing is dealing with that of the blood of Adam that you inherited. That is what is called the sanctification, which is there for every believer to come and ask God to do for him. I will yet be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. That they might receive forgiveness of sins and sanctification, which is true faith in me. Your sins are forgiven, the one you committed. But the, not, the one that is promoting sin inside you, the Adamic nature, is by sanctification. And Christ said, you will come to him again and receive sanctification by asking him and believing him as you as a sinner asked him and believed him in salvation, the believer will come to act back to him and ask him and believe him for sanctification. It's then he becomes clean. See it again in that Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Yes. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. God wants, by this sanctification, you should now be presented to God without spot. You will live your life without lying. <laughs> Me, lying. Lying. Never done. Never done. Yes, but I remember one time in the early part of my salvation that this type of Adam, Adam, Abra, Abrahamic prayer came on me and I said something that was not true. It was a lie by denying something. How many years ago? How many years could that be? Is it more than 40 years ago or what? or 39 or what I have never remembered one lie and there shall be no lie in my life forever that's what I'm telling you that's the early part of my salvation just the same year or so oh. that is what I'm saying you could fail like that but there is opportunity you can come up to a higher level of lie where no sin Grows your life. Your tongue purified. Because your heart has been cleansed. Your heart has been cleansed. That's what God wants to do in your life. Take away all defilement from your life. Now, we want to see the life of David. David was a believer. David was a true believer. But he committed sin and failed. It appeared he was not sanctified. At the time, he was a believer serving God. His fall now opened his eyes to sanctification and he prayed and got sanctified the Bible said that sin of Uriah 
Rira's wife was the only sin. From that day, from that occasion, the, or from that occasion that he sinned, sent to did, did many things, sent even to kill. When devil is got back from that occasion, nothing like that remained. Nothing like that was done again. See David's case in the book of Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I read verse 1. Yeah. He had committed this immorality. See his prayer. Have mercy upon me. That, you read all from verse 1 to uh, verse 14. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. This one, he put them in plural, transgressions, various sins, various, many, adultery, pretentious living, sending somebody, sending a letter to somebody to make him killed, and all that, and many others. He said, God blot them out. Wash me truly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I am a sinner. Wash me. Clean me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. What I did, it was a sin, God. What I did against Uriah, was a sin, O oh God. Cleanse me from it. Wash me. Take away that thing from my life. I agree that I have sinned. Look at clearly what the sin. Other people know about it. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. God, I did it. I can't refuse. I can't say because I am in the throne. I am known by your name already. So how can I be accepting before people? Never. I accept. I've sinned. Against you, I have done this wickedness. So that when you make your revelation, your revelation should be true. Because it was by revelation his sin was discovered. He never said it. It was God revealing through another person, Prophet, Dan, Prophet Nathan, that see what David has done. Go and tell him. But David said, you, you were right. But some human beings, when God gives revelation on them, they will never accept it. Not me, I don't know. Go and tell God, if he knew that, that why it is like that, okay. Let him serve me. Otherwise, me, I don't know. Just lies upon lies. Because they don't want to be saved. David said, no. You are right. The revelations you gave about me were right. What Nathan came to say was right. That is somebody who is in heaven now. By your own, you're not following his steps. You're denying your own. You're denying your own. Yeah. Behold. Now, he is describing the Adamic nature. He has pleaded for the forgiveness of that sin. He is going to ask God for thorough pardon. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Can you now say, before I was worshipping in iniquity. My mother conceived me in iniquity. Yes. So that is why he is pleading. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. 
And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. God, not your mouth, your heart should bear witness that you are true. Your heart should bear witness that you are true. That is because you are looking into the heart. And the heart has this Adamic nature that is affecting your tongue. That is producing some uncleanness in your life. Showing up to this time, although you, are, you have given your life to Jesus, the heart needs a second touch to be free. Free indeed within me. So, David was praying. Prayed for forgiveness of sin of his backsliding and then prayed for his sanctification. We told you the case of Elisha. Elisha, I mean, sorry, Prophet Eli, I mean, Isaiah, rather, Prophet Eli, Isaiah, he had the same thing. He was a prophet of God, preached greatly, but see, Isaiah, chapter 6, from verse 1, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. And high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke then said ah woe is me for I am done because I saw because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the, with the tongues from off the altar. And he said, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. This is a second walk. A second walk. He was already in Christ. A messenger of the gospel. He was already preaching and prophesying. But with unclean lips. With defilement. Now. He cried. Oh Lord I am undone. I see sin in my life. I don't know what to do. I do all consecration. But I say find it. I tried all I can. But this anger will not go. This envy will not go. Oh, Jesus, this pride, I feel high. What do I do? I know I should not have it. The Lord answered, and an angel came and laid a call on him, call of fire. He was purified. Sanctification. Second touch. You need a second touch. You need the second walk of grace. You need the second walk of grace. Is what many don't know. They have been laboring but still sinners. It's what kept many in many churches in sin. It's because they lack the second touch. It affects them. They cannot be holy. They cannot be righteous. Many of them are not even born again. To the few that are born again, they cannot be sanctified because they don't know it. Do you know what you read? How can I except some man should guide me? They don't have anybody to guide them. Nobody has told them that you have not yet arrived. That you have to move forward again. That there's something else you need to take. The man had a passport. And he said he wants to travel to America. He went, he said, they told him that he should go and get a passport. He got a passport and was preparing for his journey. He didn't know that a visa was required. He didn't know it was not just passport. 
but that you have to apply for American visa. He was not aware. He was just thinking of when he will go. To him, anytime he wanted to go, he would go to the airport and give them his transfer money there. And he went to the airport and presented the transfer money. They said, which money, money for what? He said, I'm traveling to America. Oh, where's your visa? Bring your passport. They said, no visa. There's no visa. He said, another visa is there. But they didn't tell me. They didn't tell me. No, ma, you cannot, make, um, you cannot move to America. There is a visa. Your passport has to be stamped by American government. They will put their image there. They will put their acceptance stamp there before they welcome you to America. Before even the flight can take you from here. You are not sanctified. The stamp of the blood of Jesus of purification is not in you and the bible said without holiness no man shall see the lord your heaven has been affected your people have never told you my people perish for lack of knowledge they have not told you they perish for lack of knowledge that's why the lord has really favored you to be here to learn these things to know them in holiness revival movement because without holiness you are not making it to heaven without holiness and you need sanctification you need sanctification to be spotless to be holy to have a heart that does not contaminate your tongue you need the second touch sister you need the second walk of grace it is the second walk of grace christ died for sinners to make them become part of him part of him in the church he died again for the church to sanctify them and give them holiness to make them holy. He prayed for his disciples. He said, Father, sanctify them. Through thy word, thy word is truth. Sanctify them. I came that they might be sanctified. Talking about the disciples. But for the sinners, I came that they may be saved. Going to heaven is by processes. Attending to holiness is by processes. It's one salvation and two sanctification. You go to God for it. In fact, they're still for the purpose of service. They're still baptism in the Holy Ghost. These are the processes in Christianity. But you are not aware. Some of you just jump into speaking in tongues. It is not like that. It is not like that. You need to be baptized. You don't speak in tongues by yourself. It's by the move of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one that will come upon you. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. In Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth, it is by the Holy Ghost. It's not you choosing to speak in tongues. When this, and the Bible said they were all gathered together in one accord, and the Spirit fell upon them, and everyone was found speaking in tongues by the Holy Ghost that moved them, not by themselves. Get the correct teaching. Get and be a true Christian, not deceived one, not deceived one. Get holiness. Ask God it is there. Ask God. Holiness is for you. Holiness is for you. That's what the word of God is telling us. Sanctification. Sanctification. It is what takes you to holiness. Yeah. The Christ's blood is able to sanctify you holy. Sanctify you. Cleanse you. Make you perfect. In the book of Hebrews. Chapter 9, verse 14. Hebrews. Chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Purge your conscience. The blood of Christ. Blood of Christ can purge you. The blood of Christ can cleanse you. The blood of Christ can purify you. The blood of Christ can purify your heart. Your blood, the blood of Christ can cleanse your tongue. It will make you clean your heart and tongue. Your heart and tongue. Your heart and tongue. By the power of the blood. It shall, they shall be cleansed. They shall be cleansed. Because of the power of the blood. How much more? How much more? How much more? The just shall live by believing in Christ. The just but shall live by the sacrifice of Christ. The just shall be made holy. By the sacrifice of Christ, 
The just shall be made holy. Only, only believe. It shall be done. Mighty things you don't do. You are not aware that I purify. You, don't, you are not aware that I make holy. But call upon me. I will do it. You will wonder. You will wonder. Your life will be free from sin. You will wonder. Your life will be free from sin. All provocations will not make any bidding to you. All provocation. Attraction to immorality. No, to have no more power over your life. You will be free. Your heart will be free. Anger will be wiped away. You'll be, wonder, you'll be wondering when somebody abuses you and you feel free. You even laugh and say, God bless you. I'm telling you, your life will change. Miracle will happen to you. I say, miracle will happen to you. You will just be nice. You will just be loving. You'll be original love. Original love will take over your life. Yay, sanctification. After the cleansing of the heart and tongue, the believer must be determined not to defile himself as Daniel did. Don't, it's not that, you know, everything is determined not to do it. And the Lord helps us. We cooperate. We cooperate. We cooperate with God. Do your portion. God will do his portion. Make sure you do not. God will make sure you will not. Make sure you do not. God will make sure you will not. Make sure you do not. God will make sure you will not. So this cooperation is going together between you and the living God. Between you and the living God. Now, God will keep you. He will keep you. I said the Lord will keep you. The Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose heart, whose mind is stayed on him because he trusted in God. You say, what if somebody comes to sleep with me by force? God will stop that person. He will not come. He will not come. The prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. When God sees higher temptation coming, he will hide you away so that it will not overpower you. I'm telling you, it will not overpower you if your heart stays in God. It is when you remove your heart. That's why the devil comes again. It is when you refuse to clean the house that the house becomes dirty. Otherwise, if you'll be cleaning it every day, the house will remain clean. It will remain clean. It will remain clean. So, be determined. Now, be sanctified. Be determined. Yeah. See the, the, the determination of the psalmist in Psalm 73. I mean, sorry. In Psalm 17, verse 3. Psalm 17. I read... Verse 3, the word of God says, The Lord is so great. The Lord is so great. Be, be determined. Be determined. Be determined that you will not sin. You will not commit sin. Be determined that you, your mouth will not speak corrupt things. Be determined that your mouth will not speak dirty things. Be determined that you like this will not speak things that are dirty, that will hurt somebody. No. Yes, I am purposed. I'm looking for that scripture. For I am purposed that my tongue shall not transgress. For I am purposed. Psalm 73, let's read verse Verse 1 to 3. Hear, hear, hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer. That goeth not out of fen leaves. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. I've made up my mind. And God also will say, I have made up my mind to always help you. Since you have committed yourself to me, I've purified you. And you say you will never speak faulty things again. I also have determined. I will back you up. I will not allow provocation beyond your level. No. I will not allow Temptation above your power. I will not allow it. There's no temptation taking you by such as is common to man, that is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you? Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond the measure you can control? God has promised. You will never be tempted beyond the measure you will control. Temptation can come. 
the greater temptation that will smite you will not come. If a temptation will come that is above your level, when you are determined like this, to push you down, God will not allow it. All the temptation shall be according to your level. It may be looking high, but God's power with you will break it down. The Lord will keep you. I said the Lord will keep you. Yeah. Bridle your tongue. Promise yourself, I will control this tongue. Make a promise. In James chapter 1, verse 20, tongue. Yes. You will control it. In James chapter 1, I read verse 26. The Bible says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Now, make a promise. You will not be the best speaker among women, except it be in matters of Jesus. If it is matter of conversation, your words will be few. Make up your mind. You will not be an entertainer among people, except it be for salvation of their souls. Make up your mind. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. This will keep you holy. Because in multitude of ways, there lacketh no sin. The beauty of a woman of God is seen by her few ways. By her few ways. When your ways are few, people will be longing for it. Your ways will be precious. Things that are few are precious. Things that are scarce are precious. Make yourself precious. Reduce your speech. Control your speech. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Let your ways be few. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Yes, multitude of words. No, don't do it. Let your words be few. In the multitude of words, they wanted no, not sin. But he that refrained his lips is wise, is holy, is pr protecting herself, is protecting himself. That your ways are few. That your ways are few. That your ways are few. You hinder sin. You hinder display of ignorance. Yes. The word of God. Your lips make it up that it will not speak lies. It will not. Revelation chapter 14. Verse 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4 and verse 5 the Bible tells us yeah people that are pure people that are clean these are they which were not defied women it's also talking about women too that are not defied with men they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Let no guile be found in your mouth. Because Jesus wants you to follow him everywhere. You're following, going for crusade from place to place. Let no lie, let no foul speech come into your mind. No! No! These are they that are not defiled with women. 
not defiled with me. Their mouth are not defiled. Their tongue not defiled. They go with the lamb with us so ever he goeth. Wherever the lamb goes, with clean mouth. That's what the Lord is saying. Yes. That's what God is. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guy. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Days are evil. There are some information so private. If you don't handle them well, they will bring reproach to the name of Jesus. Keep your mouth from your friend. Don't pass it over to your friend. Don't trust her with such information. Such information that you stand up to see that you have opportunity to know maybe by revelation or by whichever way. And you know this information is deadly. If it is not well used, it will destroy a soul. Keep the door of your mouth. Don't tell your husband. Many of you have unbelieving husbands and you're carrying information about the church to them. It's a sin. Will it edify him? Or you're giving him, to one, giving him something to laugh and mock the man of God. Mock the name of Jesus. Mock the church of God. Keep it from the... Keep it... Do not allow... Even he that lieth at thy bosom to hear. Because it's delicate. Don't trust in a friend. Where do you corrupt the environment? Why did you, where will, are you corrupting, corrupting the environment? Somebody went and, went and brought an information that, hey, Saul has died. How did he die? I was the one that killed him. In fact, he told me that I should kill him. So I killed him. And he said it publicly, thinking that people would give him glory. David said, eh, you were not afraid to be saying this thing like this publicly against the Lord's anointed. As you have said in your mouth, so it shall happen to you. Pick him and kill him. He killed the Lord's anointed. Why were you not afraid? Why didn't you allow him to die by himself? Why, you are coming to announce it for your glory? No glory for you, but dead. So hold your mouth. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. He that openeth his mouth, why shall have destruction? That is the world. That is the world. You are the one sharing information in the churches. Whatever you hear from the headquarters. Uh, somebody inside told me, somebody inside. Showing that you are a tell bearer. Repent of it. Now that you have said, God, cleanse me. Hold your tongue. Bridle your flat. Don't flatter people. That's devil. It's devil that will be given praise. The type of praise that you will jump, you will break your head. You will bring angels. Angels will guide you. And you will not allow anything to happen to you. Jump down from this place. Yes. You are bringing flattery titles to people. Telling them something to please them when they are not worthy of that. Just maybe because you are looking for some gains or you want to fool him. Yeah. In Job 27, Job chapter 27, I read from verse 1 to 6. Moreover, Job Continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who had taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who had vexed my soul, all the while 
my breath is in me. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness. Promising somebody I will deal with you. I will pluck that eye from you. Is it the voice of a child of God? That says you are going to pluck eye from somebody? I will break that your teeth. Jesus. Is it the voice of Whose voice are we hearing? Voice in the kingdom of darkness. You say it's a man, of, a woman of God. Which woman of God? Job here said, All the while my breath is in me, and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak, God, speak wickedness. No, my tongue utter deceit. Make a promise. As long as you live, you better die than tell lies. Let them cut down your reward than that you tell lies. I came late. I came late. I came late. Let me suffer that thing which late coming gives so that I can learn from it. My late coming life can also learn from it and repent. I am purpose. I will never reply bad words to my husband, even if he slaps me. Even if he denies me anything, I will never see as long as I'm alive. All the while my breath is in my nostrils, I am breathing from my nose. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. All the while my breath is in me. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips. My tongue. My mouth shall not speak wickedness. Don't terrify people. Don't terrify people. The Bible says. Threatening. Not, not threatening. Not threatening people. I will deal with you. Speaking to children, speaking to servants, or speaking to somebody in your pride. Never say it. Never say it. Oh, telling a child, I am going now, child, I'm going to buy you this, I'm going to buy you this, I'm going, you, you know you're not going to buy it. Don't say it. There are other wisdom, clean wisdom, you can use to appease the child. Don't promise the trust of your wife. You're destroying the trust of your husband. When you make promises that you don't do, tomorrow your promises will mean nothing. You have destroyed it. So, God wants you to be holy. And I am happy because he has done it in your life. I'm very grateful. Women, to the God of heaven, who brought you here and has done you well? Yeah. He has purified your life. Yeah. I am so happy that newness will come into holiness revival movement. Yeah. I trust from yesterday you started doing your restitution. You started doing it, settling among yourselves, or promising that when you go back, even with unbelieving women, you're going to settle things. I, I trust you began to call your husband. I trust you have begun to call your husband. You have begun to call your husband. Ah, darling, I'm changed. I'm a new man, new woman. When I come home now, hey, rice and stew, very plenty. Yes. He has done me well. Rise up upon your feet. The God has sanctified. You have done me well. He has done you well. Ah, worship. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. He has done you well.
Open your mouth and tell him so. Sanctify me. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image of you. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image of you. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image of you. You made Noah an image of you. You made Abraham an image of you. You made Sarah an image of you. You made Deborah an image of you. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Make me holy. Go to your prayer. Don't join singing. Singing will not do it. It's praying. Cry to God. Don't be accustomed to singing. You have been singing for all this while. I'm singing to inspire you so that you can pray. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image of you. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image of you. You make Peter an image of you. You make James an image of you. You made John an image of you. You made Andrew an image of you. Worship. The Lord is cleansing you because he's going to give you the husband you have been praying for. He will make you marry a good man. You should be good to the good man. You will do that man good and not evil all the days of your life. Spin star. Widow woman, there's still hope. The Lord is preparing you. There's hope. He will use you in this end time. He will make you to marry according to your prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I worship. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah.
For in Jesus' name we pray. Before we round up in prayer, let's lift up our hands and ask God to sanctify us, purify us. Father, whatever the thing may be, the sin in our life that is making us not to be so perfect, Father, Lord, we pray, sanctify us. Sing this song with me. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Close your eyes. You are asking the Lord. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image. I me, Lord. Make me holy. Lord, make me an image of you. You may Esther. An image of you, you may marry. An image of you, you may Deborah. An image of you, Jesus, we want to be. Holy Ghost, we want to be. Emmanuel, we want to be. Great Yahweh, we want to be. Our Father, we want to be. Christ, we want to be. Father, you say, ask and ye shall receive. We want to be an image of you. Our Lord, people we know we serve a living God in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, transform us. Break every strong yoke in our life in Jesus' name. Yeah. You say this mountain shall be removed. Father, every mountain that is hindering sanctification in our life, we command it to be removed now by the power in the name of Jesus. Oh God, breathe upon us. Give us a new life. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, sanctify us. Jesus, sanctify us. That we will be a true disciple at this end time. In the name of Jesus. We pray that Lord, every sin that have hindered sanctification in our life will not take us to hell. We command by the power in the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus. The Bible said they mention the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. We command every sin in our life. Bow in Jesus name. Bow in Jesus name. Every anger, every lying tongue, every gossip, anything that is not of God. The Bible says, any tree that is planted that is not of God shall be uprooted. Every sin that is not of God in our life, all bad behavior, all attitude that is not of God, be uprooted now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, we bless you. Circumcise our heart, O oh God. Breathe our tongue that we will live for you. We will speak positively in the name of Jesus. Give us new mindset in the name of Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sanctifying us. Thank you for being our means. Continue with us. Lord, we love you with all our heart. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen.